here with God Bold Exotics. I wanted to do kind of a fun little episode. I kind of teased these guys a little bit on a live episode that I did a while back. They've been feeding really well for me and uh, growing, and so I've already had a few of them shed. So I figured, you know, I'd bring them out and uh, show you guys a little bit uh, about a project that I have. I've kind of kept it, uh, I wouldn't want to say tight lipped, but I've kept it on the DL. I've got two pairs of these guys and I'm really excited to be working with them. They're very unique, very different from anything I've ever worked with. And, you know, I didn't really want to film the unboxing because there are some projects that I have tucked away that I just, you know, it's not my main focus, but there are things I just kind of want to work on for my own enjoyment. And I'm not really interested in, in uh, showing them on the YouTube channel. There's a lot of uh, people out there that work with the species. So anyway, I want to go ahead and get into it. Uh, these are blood pythons. I'll take out the first pair. They are younger. These animals were born in 2018, but uh, we'll start with the most basic. This is actually a female. She is just a normal, uh, I guess you could call her a high contrast animal, but um, she's pretty cool. Uh, very laid back. Um, and she was produced, all these animals were produced by Nick Botini of Cold-Blooded Earth. And anyone who's into blood pythons knows that his animals are top notch. So, I mean, you guys could just see the side pattern on her. She's got a lot of really good contrast. Now, this is just a normal red blood. There's no morph involved with this. And the reason I bought her, as you guys know from some of my other videos, I'm not a huge fan of morphs, but there's some species I think they're kind of cool. Blood pythons being one of them. And I did uh, buy uh, a morph to breed her to. And the reason I got her is because, you know, my thoughts are if you're gonna work with morphs, make sure that the normals that you get are exceptional. And, you know, that's gonna just make that morph pop that much more uh, with color whenever you breed them. So because her colors are so outstanding and so nice, I mean, Nick was telling me that this is probably one of the nicest normals he's produced, um, you know, and it's a female, so that's even better. But because her colors are so, uh, so good that I figured, you know, she would be a great counterpart to this male that I bought, picked up. So, you know, this started out with, this was really the animal I was gonna buy, and then it just kept uh, going from there. So I ended up getting four, four animals. But anyway, this is just a normal red blood python. Really, really cool, cool animal. So anyway, I will leave her right here. This is the male. Now he is a batik. So that is a, uh, a morph uh, that is I'm not positive if there's a super form so i don't know if it's incomplete dominant or if it's just a uh you know a regular like 50 percent come out looking uh like batik and 50 percent come out looking normal i'm not quite positive but i know it's not simple recessive so again one thing i like about these guys is the pixelated pattern on top is really cool but i love the sides it's almost like a granity look um, not to be confused with the granite morph but to me, that's just kind of what it reminds me of. So anyway, this is the male. So I figured, you know, if I'm gonna buy a male that is a morph and breed him to something, I want it to be a really, really nice normal. And that's why I got her. So I'm gonna put these guys um, right next to one another. If I can get them to stay still. So this next group are 2017s. Uh, these are also morphs, um, but they are really, really cool animals. I think they're absolutely stunning. And uh, without further ado, I'll go ahead and bring these guys out. This is the female. Oh no, actually this is the male. Hold on, let me get the female out. She's a little bit bigger. She's a little bit of, of, a, of a mover. This is a, 
Um, also a red blood, but she is a matrix 100% het T negative. The matrix you can see on the sides with all the blushing and whatnot of the colors. Um, if she'll stay still for a second. These guys are not, not a, I, I found them to be, you know, obviously I want to give them their respect, but they definitely talk to me and they're kind of, kind of like, they like to hiss. I have found that to be all, all bluff. You know, I'll go in there with a hook and kind of rub it on them for a second. And they realize pretty quickly, I'm not food. I'm not trying to mess with them um, or I'm not going to hurt them. I'm just going to get in there and either clean the cage or take them out for a minute. She's really, really cool animal. Um, she's, uh, you know, these guys eat like crazy. Um, and it's it's good thing to, oh, well, now she's kind of kind of alert. You know, they're not a ball python by any means, but like with, with any snake, they calm down a little bit as they grow. These animals have never struck at me before. They, like other snakes, are pretty head shy. I, I kind of expect that with any species that I work with. And they're not, uh, they're not aggressive by any means. They've got a strong food response. Again, I go in and I clean the cage. I'm not taking these guys out and draping them along, but I suspect that as they grow, they're going to become, you know, a little bit more placid and, and relaxed and, and whatnot. So anyway, this is the female. I don't have names for any of these guys yet. So if you guys have any name suggestions, you can leave them in the comments below. Now, if she will stay still, I'm going to put her down, but I'm thinking she's not. I'm thinking she's going to want to run. So can you just hang out for a second? Maybe, maybe not. Well, I might try and take her outside. See if I can get her to calm down. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna get the male out. Probably hear him hissing. This is the male, also a matrix. The female is actually going into blue, so her colors aren't the best right now. But you could see, I mean, look at look at the contrast on this, this animal. I mean, it's just insane that you know, that there are animals out there with this much pattern, this much color. But he, you know, he's a red blood, he's a matrix, and he's 100% het for T negative. So whenever I breed uh, these two together, I could get matrix animals, I could get uh, T negatives, and I could get uh, ivory. Since the matrix incomplete dominant, there is a super form, it's an ivory animal. So it's kind of cool, you know, if I breed these guys together, then the clutch could have a combination of any of those three. And there might be some normals in there that are possible hets for uh, T negative. But anyway, really, really cool. I really like them. They're a lot of fun to work with. The pattern's very unique. And one thing I like about bloods is they're, they're polygenic. So of course you have the morphs and stuff, but like when you breed two together, you know, you could get pretty, pretty crazy variation between uh, clutch mate to clutch mate. So that makes them a lot of fun. As you guys know, I like the crested geckos. I like the Amazon tree boas and that stuff's all unpredictable as far as phenotype goes. So bloods kind of fall into that. I mean, there are some morphs that make them a little bit more predictable as what you're going to get. But when it comes to just bringing normals together, that's where it gets a little gray because you could get animals with really, really nice color and pattern. You could get some animals that don't have the greatest color and pattern. You could get animals that have something a little unique that pops up. Uh, so anyway, I found them to be really, really fun to work with. Again, you can kind of hear them talking to me. They, they hiss a little bit, um, but I, I have found them to be uh, all, bar all bark, no bite. You know, they hiss, they let me know, hey, don't bug me. And then when you take them out, they calm down fine. And you know, you can see his tongue flicking, flickering. He's just kind of checking things out. So. They're not, they're not that bad. I mean, there are probably exceptions to, to the rule, like with any species. I think they're really fun. If you guys haven't had a chance yet, hit up Nick. He's a great guy to talk to. Um, I had never worked with Bloods before purchasing th these, two, these four, and I got them all at the same time. And Nick uh, and I have known each other for a long time when we both were keeping chondros. Nick was very, very... Uh, open and easy to talk to. He answered all my questions, sold me on, on how cool they are. And I couldn't agree more now that I have them in my collection and I've been working with them for a little while, feeding them and cleaning their cage and just seeing kind of what makes them tick. I just think they're really, really cool snakes. And I mean, look at them. <laughs> 
They're not arboreal, so that's the one thing. If they could be arboreal, that would be awesome. But with the uh, the heavy body that they have, they you know obviously it just would not be productive. But just really really cool animals, awesome little little snakes that will become big snakes. I have no intentions of growing these guys up to be behemoths. Uh, you can do that with bloods pretty easy because they are a sedentary animal. They just sit in the wild. These guys are going to hang out. Uh, on the riverbanks or in creek beds and stuff like that or close to water and they're just gonna sit and it's super humid and they're gonna wait you know either uh, you know rodent trail that goes by they can wait for days on end even up to a week and not move at all and they're ambush predators so they're gonna they're gonna strike from below when some or towards the you know laterally towards the side they can get obese by overfeeding because they are not designed to be high moving uh, snakes. They don't need a high caloric intake because they're not burning that many calories in the wild or in their enclosures. They're just hanging out and uh, waiting for stuff to come to them. So you got to be kind of careful with them. Make sure that if you're going to keep them, you don't overfeed them. Don't give them too large of prey items. As I've said before in my other videos, I'm a bigger fan of feeding more frequently smaller prey items than giving them very large prey items. Just a, a, a tidbit of info. Hope you guys like it. As always, I appreciate everybody's support. I appreciate everybody, you know, watching the videos and the feedback I've gotten has all been really positive. I hear these like horror stories from people with YouTube channels about getting, you know, really, really negative comments. And that could partially be because my subscriptions are not all that high, but I'm kind of a, you, you see what you get person. And I try to be real through my videos and not sugarcoat anything or sound like a complete jackass that doesn't know what I'm talking about. I admit when I don't, and as I said earlier, I'm just kind of learning with these guys. So uh, we're kind of learning together. I really appreciate everybody watching and supporting me and this fun little adventure that I started last year being the YouTube channel. So there's gonna be more videos to come. You guys take it easy. Thanks for watching. Godbold Exotics.